My name is Robert Olguin from KFOX 14. Great to see all of you here. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm not going to waste any time here talking about me or the fact that you can watch me at 5 o'clock and 9 o'clock on KFOX 14. Uh, I mean, we're going to get past that quickly because clearly we are here to hear some thoughts and observations from our guest here, our esteemed guest. Chef, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Put your hands together and welcome him once again. I know we heard from him. So, Chef, I think this is an interesting time, uh, you know, in El Paso's culinary scene. Recently, Texas Monthly, uh, a food writer for Texas Monthly, said that El Paso was food pilgrimage worthy. Wow. And that, you know, a lot of that has to do with some exciting things that are happening. Clearly, we've had a couple of James Beard nominees here. I know that Emiliano is here with us. I think I saw him earlier. And they're doing exciting work at some local restaurants. Chefs are working hard. What do you think about the current temperature when it comes to the culinary scene here in El Paso? Well, you know what? Let me just, I think you're on. Let me, just, let me yes. turn on my mic. Sorry about that. About that? that okay. Helpful, no? Okay. There we go. Andale. Estamos. <laughs> I think it's exciting. I mean, first of all, just like the renaissance of downtown, to see what, what, what you know, I, I stayed last night at the Paso del Norte and how they, they refurbished that and places like the Stanton House. I think they're raising the game. And, it, and like I said earlier, it's not just Mexican anymore. I think, I think us as a, as a culinary destination has to be more diverse and have a, a, a different footprints of restaurants here. Because I think it's going to keep people engaged and and, and, and seek out all these different flavors, you know? I think it's super important. So I, I find it really beautiful how, how, how we've progressed. Yeah. I thought we were, you know, a little too much Chile Verde and Machaca, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> so, but now, we're, now we're kind of branching out a little bit. Right, even, the, even the, the chefs that are focusing on Mexican cuisine, they are doing it in such an interesting way. The, yeah. the, the people who are really working hard to, to make it their own and also sort of return to some traditional things, clearly things that have always been important to you, the authenticity of the dish. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see our chefs locally tr work in other cities and be exposed to those different kinds of cuisines and the, the different food scenes out there because I think they can bring it back to El Paso and really and really inspire and teach. I think that's what we need. We need our chefs to go outside the city for a little bit and be exposed to different different mentors and chefs and then bring that back. Yeah. yeah. Well, you mentioned inspire and teach and I think that that's what we're here to do is to be inspired by some of your thoughts. So some students sent us some questions oh, and some cool. educators, local district students and educators, sent us some questions here. And then we're going to do a lightning round, if you don't mind. Course, we have about you know, 20 minutes or so. But first, we're going to start with some questions here. So maybe thought-provoking questions, I hope. The culinary arts profession can be difficult, and business ownership can be even riskier. Can you explain how you were able to be successful at both? Yeah, I think, you know, a lot of times chefs have been taken advantage of, to be very honest. They give you like this, this what's called phantom equity. They'll say you're an owner, but you really, what are you the owner of, you know? You, you know, usually how restaurants work is you have to pay back the initial investment of the restaurant before you start to garner any profit sharing. And a lot of times the chefs were taken advantage for that. So I think what I established early on was tried to open up a restaurant, very grassroots, and then we did it in my first place, it was called Paladar in New York City in the Lower East Side, and we opened it for like 100 grand. It was very, you know, my, my business partner painted everything. I literally took, you know, what we made one night, and then I'll go buy food, and you know, me and three little Mexicanos cooking, you know, and it was awesome, you know? So, it, you have to just, you have to appreciate your value and speak up as a chef. I think it's really important to be able to, you know, value your work. And, and charge accordingly, oh, okay. you know what I mean? So. Yeah. Good advice there. Okay, next question. How do you feel that teaching culinary arts to kids today differs from when you were younger, when you were earning your stripes? Yeah, uh, like I said earlier, I think now the, the food scene is, 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 is so much more broad. I think nowadays you can go into so many, so many different arenas of food service that uh, allows, I think, uh, for a more, more balanced lifestyle, you know what I mean? And you can, you can have like a good quality of life as opposed to just doing what I did, you know, work, you know, work 90 hours a week, yeah. you know what I mean? So um, I think that's the biggest difference that's changed. I think I, we're starting to value our personal time a little bit more in the restaurant industry. And then, um, and, then uh, and again, it's just now, now culinary schools are teaching, 
you know, food from Vietnam and, you know, all parts of the world where back in the day it was just French traditional cuisine was being taught. Right. So now it's, you know, I, I think it's a lot broader scope of the, of the actual education that's happening in school. So. And, and that is something I would hear from restaurant owners a lot and, and chefs is that, yeah, you live and work and breathe there. Uh, I mean, you, it, yeah. become, it, it overtakes your life sometimes, right? Yeah, I, you know, and it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, when I started, the expectation was you were going to be a restaurant chef and that's what you did. And nowadays, it's like, I'm happy for it. I'm happy that people are not getting burnt out. And, you know, yeah. the, the restaurants create lots of bad habits, you know what I mean? You're working all the time. People go out and party after work, and it's just, you know, you yeah, got to let high stress, right? Yeah, high stress. Yeah. You got to, you know, I heard a stat that, that the average lifespan of a man is 72. The average lifespan of a chef is 63, you mm -hmm. know? And that's how much the conditions really tax you, yeah. you know? But nowadays, it's different, you know? I think everyone knows how to take better care of themselves and all of that good stuff. So. But, yeah, let's hope so, for sure, for the, the, new, the new generation coming up. Um, so this, this is along those lines, and maybe you can drill down and get more specific, but clearly it touches on what you just mentioned. How do you prioritize family over career? How do you draw those lines? Yeah, well, you, you have to, I, I mean, I, the way I've learned, and I'm still, still working on it, I mean, look, I lost a marriage because I worked too much, you know, and, and I'm being very candid about it, you know, it's, you know, when you have an opportunity in life, you, you know, like for me, I had to take it. My whole dream was to only have my own restaurant. And I wanted to be the captain of my own ship, and I wanted to be able to cook the food that spoke to me. And then, um, and then like television came on, and, and, and then I just used the television as a way to getting people into the restaurant, I just as a marketing tool. And now the, now the message has changed. Now it's like, now I'm like representing all of the, the raza and everybody now through television, and it's yeah. like, and it's a great responsibility. I've been doing it for over 20 years, you know. Yeah. It's a long time. I'm, I'm not a television star like yourself, but, you know, <laughs> local legend over here, you know. Yeah, I mean? I've, got about, I've got about four fans in the room, and my mom is one of them. But <laughs> you're, very gracious to, no, no. you're very gracious to say that. But uh, I think it goes back probably also to what you were saying earlier, which is valuing yourself. And that, that does mean drawing boundaries, right? Yeah, absolutely. To, yeah. yeah, I mean, look, you know, I, I have a 12-year-old son, and I told my son, I was like, you're only going to do two things for me, okay? You're going to go to college, because I never went, and you are going to not be a chef. And I, that's the only two things I've asked him to do for me. So, yeah. Like, yeah, but you have to prioritize, you know. I'm very blessed. We have a beautiful team that works with us, and they all make sure that I have a, a, a you know, personal time, and we schedule it just like, like I would schedule work, you know what I mean? You have to schedule private time, you know. How, how interesting, though, that you do mention that a lot of what you're feeling now is um, the role of representing, yep. right? And, and that, did you ever see that coming? Did you ever think that that was going to be part of no, you know, initially when I started getting put on, like, it was, you know, at that one point I was a, a good-looking young man, you know what I mean? So <laughs> now I'm just an older good-looking man, you know? But so the, um, well, at least that's what my mom says, but. Um, that makes one of us. Yeah, exactly, right? Um, no, and then I initially got put on just because, you know, they would do like a Cinco de Mayo special or Mexican Christmas and you know, I was this young chef and they, I just started doing that early on and then it just started growing, you know, and I, and I just took advantage of the opportunities, you know what I mean? But did you feel uh, pr like a pressure that was an undue pressure? Did you feel yeah, like a little resentful yeah. about it? I did at first, you know, look, I, I, my last book is a memoir called Where I Come From. Um, hopefully you guys will pick it up at some point, you know, and spend a little money for, for the old Sanchez fund, you know, but <laughs> the, um, like, I, I really did, I, yeah, there was a lot of pressure, and then in my book I talk about, you know, depression, and I talk about, you know, times of addiction and all that kind of stuff, but, because you can't be ashamed of that, you know what I mean? You have to, like, really be upfront, you know, and I think it's a, it's a part of your life that you learn from, and also teach others. They don't feel bad if they go through the same things. Yeah. You know, a lot of mental... A lot of depression is rampant in restaurants, you know, and I really want to talk about it and let people have an opportunity to heal and just, you know, find the help you need, you know, like anything else. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, moving on here. Yeah, thanks for depressing the hell out of all I, of us. I know, I really brought the room down. <laughs> I apologize. You know, the, the tequila now. Okay, how can we switch out of 
<laughs> rampant depression. Uh, let me. Yeah, let me. Uh, let me. <laughs> okay, uh, for the students who are now in control of their mental health and have a better outlook on things, and how can graduating students select the right restaurants or organizations to begin their career? That's a good question. Um, like I said, I, I think you need, you know, as a young person, you have to write a list of people that you, that you admire and then engage them and write them like handwritten letters and say, hey, um, you know, tal fulano, tal fulana, I want to be able to work with you and, 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 and succeed and I'll do whatever it takes. And if you do that, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna move up quick. Because people do in the restaurants, there's a lot of people, like 90% of people just do the bare minimum. They'll clock in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do their little prep list and then leave. But if you come in early and stay late and engage the chef, you're going to get recognized and you're going to move up fast. So, and I know I do that with our team. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's true. Even you know, in our field. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. Well, now we're going to get to some fun questions here. A, a lightning round, okay. if you will, with the time that we have left with you. Again, thank you for your time, and no, I think no. everyone here very appreciative. Um, and then I'm going to take maybe a couple of questions from the crowd. So maybe be thinking of that as we burn through these lightning round questions. Maybe a couple of you have a, a couple of questions for the chef. So, lightning round. Yes, sir. Texting or talking? Talking. Talking. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of us grew up before cell phones, right? You know? I remember if you had, like, if your mamacita had her own line in her room, remember? That was like a big deal, you know? It's like, I don't have to call the main line, you know? I, I call your bedroom, you know? So I remember those days, you know? Or like the really long cord, yeah, yeah. go around the hall. Yeah, old school. Yeah. I think I have an insight to this next question because I met you at Stanton House a long time ago, uh, several years ago. Uh, very briefly, you were at the bar just having a drink, and I saw that you also had a Whataburger with you, a bag of Whataburger. And I actually brought it with me this morning. Really? <laughs> I did. And you look at him bring Chico's, I would have stuck up the whole joint. You know what I mean? <laughs> and look, I, I've actually seen how Chico's gets made. It, it, I, I wish I didn't see it get made, actually. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some things are le best yeah. left unseen. Right? And one, of, one of our buddies, one of our buddies is, uh, is uh, yeah, one of, the, one of the, the, the owners, I think. Yeah, Bernie, so. <laughs> well, that was the question, what's your favorite junk food? I'm not sure if that's, I don't know if that falls into that category, but what is your favorite junk food? I mean, Chico's Tacos. Yeah. You know, I mean. Ask an I, answer. I, I, I mean, I try to explain what it is to people that don't live here, and people just can't understand it. They're like, so you get like a crappy flauta and a watery tomato broth with cheap cheese. Yeah, and it's awesome. You know, you're like. <laughs> Only us would like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, There's no rational explanation no, for it, right? No, it's none. You can't. It's just it's they're like, floating in this warm bath water. Like, yeah, it's like, yeah. It's like, and there's nothing culinary interesting about it, you know what I'm saying? It's not like... And he's still... And I've been in the back, and he has like an army of these senoras rolling these things, man. Like, and they have a freaking stack of these things like that. <laughs> like they're little flout and ninjas. You know? right. like, yeah. So Havana has the cigar rollers and we have Chico's, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Totally. All right. Uh, next question here. What's the coolest place you've ever traveled to? Um, well, I go quite a bit to Thailand. I love Asian food. I, I love all those flavors. So I try to get out there once a year. And I just recently came back from South Africa and I really had a good time out there. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like, I mean, to, to see cool stuff, you have to travel over 10 hours. That's kind of like the rule, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, if you travel somewhere for three hours, it's not going to be that cool, you know? Right, right, right. You've got to cross some oceans. Yeah, right? exactly, yeah, yeah. no doubt. Okay. Next one here. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Dulce leche. Dulce leche. You know, and it's not, you know, uh, there, there's some dude wiping his ass with hundreds right now. To, when, <laughs> when, he, when, he, when, he pat, when he patented that thing. You know, it's condensed milk boiled for three hours. That's dulce leche. That's all it is. And it's patented. Yeah. It is like, you just literally take a can of condensed milk and put it in water for three hours, and that's dulce leche. Because it turns it brown, kind of, yeah, right? Yeah, it caramelizes. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. But it's also called, you know, cajeta with goat milk, and it's also called arequipe in Colombia. There's many different names for it. Manjar is another way you call dulce leche, so yeah. And an ice cream can't be beat, right? I mean, yeah. Come on. Yeah. All right. Come on. <laughs> What's a nickname people call you by? 
El jefe. El jefe, that's yeah. appropriate, yeah. No, it just means I pay all the bills. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> so it's not like some cool, like, you know, like the man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Chingon or something like that. No, I just write checks. Got it. All the time. Like, yeah, yeah, the yeah, tax yeah. bill comes yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. What do you like more, singing or dancing? Uh, both, kind of equally. I mean, I live by a simple rule, no parking on the dance floor, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and my moves are kind of, kind of legendary. Yeah. You know? And uh, people know me. No, I'm not gonna, not now. <laughs> you have to come to the Sanchez household for one of our fiestas. And then we bring over the menudo, at, you know, in the next morning, you know? Yeah. To give you an idea. Of where things end up. Yeah. yeah. Well, my brother just partake in that because he's an educator. <laughs> he, he refuses to do that. <laughs> Favorite band this week? Well, I just went into a band. I, I love um, this band called the Teskey Brothers. They're out of Australia. And they're really like soulful gringos. And... Um, I just, I'm digging their music right now. You're so. feeling that, yeah? Yeah, I love, I love, I love to go out to live shows. You know, my, my baby mama uh, was a musician, so like I'm kind of always fascinated with music. Yeah. Because most chefs are inspired by other facets of art. People that create with their hands are always usually inspired by something else, you know? Makes so. sense, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, dogs or cats? Dogs, all dogs. day long. All I'm day. allergic to cats. Oh, okay, well then you're. And you know, and you can't have a pet that doesn't need you. You know, a damn cat doesn't need you. You know, <laughs> you know, those things just run and walk by themselves. You know, yeah. but like, like uh, you know, my sister-in-law Mary is like, you know, they, 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 we're like a zoo at the house. You know, so, oh, is it like a three-legged dog? Cool, come on in. You know, like, <laughs> you know, it's like, so, yeah, dogs all day. All right, dogs. It is. Yeah. Your favorite cartoon character? Pepe Le Pew. Okay. He's problematic these days, yeah. Pepe is, you know? In my sh mon chéri, <laughs> you frisky little pussycat. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy, man, Pepe Le Pew. Yeah. I'm Speedy Gonzalez, too, but I mean, that's so cliche, you yeah. know, like, you know, so, but yeah. All right, last of the speed round questions here before we take a couple of questions from the audience, mm -hmm. which is probably, you know, this is a, 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 a litmus test. Tequila or mezcal? Both. Both. Uh, it's easy. No, but I, I mean, look, I mean, Mezcal is, is, is gone so much popularity in the last 10 years. I remember we, it, you couldn't find it anywhere, you know, especially from Oaxaca. But I, I also represent a tequila called Casadores, which I'm sure all of you guys will support. You know why? Because they pay me. So, <laughs> so that's what you guys should buy. Um, but yeah, mezcal, I think, is, you know, and what's interesting is that when it first got to the market, it was so smoky. Yeah. And they've learned how to turn it down. I think all the... All the producers of mezcal have learned to kind of have a little bit more balanced flavor profile, so it's not so aggressive for the for the people. Right, because I mean, I think that um, I can understand sipping mezcal, but when it started to be incorporated into cocktails, yeah. initially that was pretty rough. I thought. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, I look. I, there's nothing better than a great margarita with a little floater of mezcal on top. Yeah. Okay. That takes you to a nice happy place. <laughs> you have good, after the dancing and the you sun. have good dreams when you do that, buddy. You know. What I mean? And then I get more attractive when women drink it, too. So it's like, they're like, you were hot, bro, but now you're really hot. You know what I mean? You know, so. Great. Well, listen, uh, again, we're running out of time here. We have time for two questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyone to raise their hand and, and ask the chef a question? We have a question right here. Microphone is coming to you so that everyone can hear you. What ingredient would you, do you hate? You just not can't taste or take? Um, I don't like green bell peppers. I don't feel like it serves a purpose. Oh. <laughs> Tastes like nothing. Yeah. It's just like, it's like a throwaway. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, you know, like all the people that like vegan stuff, I'm harping on vegans, I think, today, but all of that vegan flower crap has insects in it, by the way. You know, it's like, the majority has like cricket flour and shit, like a real worm. <laughs> I'm serious. True? So you're all like, oh, I'm a vegan. Oh, I'm like, okay, bro. I'm like, Maybe do a little research, you know what I'm saying? Why don't you read a book, you know? So, you know. Cricket flower, I was not aware of that. All right, one more question. One more, someone's got a good one. Okay, right over here from the side. Give us your name, too. 
My name is Denise, and my question is, if you could describe your life as a recipe, what would it be and why? Oh, oh great question. question. Wow, that is the one to end on, folks. Oh. Debbie, oh. bringing it. Mic drop over there, please. It would definitely be a mole, you know, because like, I'm, you know, there's tons of ingredients and it all has, everything has to be balanced and harmonious, you know what I mean? In order for it to be good and a little spicy and a little sweet, like I am. <laughs> Put your hands together, Chef Aron Sanchez, everyone. What a great discussion. Thank you so much. All right, well, we've got lots to do. Thank you so much, all of you. Once again, Robert Olguin, you know, 5 o'clock, 9 o'clock. If you want to watch, you know, that's where you can find me. <laughs>